Brian Danielson's contract ends just before All In, but he says he wants to stay on and through um, the Tacoma Dome show, which I think is either in September or um, October, the Wrestle Dream Tacoma show that's happening this coming. Actually, I think it's in October. Um, and then he's going to be essentially a free agent. He's only going to work part-time schedule. I don't think this is getting enough play, man, because he is a vital piece to AEW. He is super vital. I don't see him going back to WWE because I don't think – I think he feels one. He's not. He's an exec basically in AEW at this point, right? He's gonna keep. I'm pretty sure he's gonna keep his job there. Tony basically said he gave him the keys of the kingdom if something ever happened to him. So I think that he eventually just resigns and just doesn't have a full time contract. You know, play it out. And you know, I don't. I don't mean like we've seen this. I didn't think Cody was gonna leave either. But I mean, like, yeah. I don't foresee Danielson leaving and going back to WWE. I just don't I, think they have a place for him right now. Yeah, I'm. My prediction is is that uh, is that he will stay in AEW. He obviously looks like he's very happy, um, but he was also very happy in WWE. And mm-hmm. he wasn't the guy that left WWE because he hated Vince. He actually had a really good relationship with Vince. Um, probably to to which kind of kills part of my opinion of him because I'm such a an admirer of his. But um, you know, I I don't think he's leaving AEW. But if I were WWE oh, and nice. I wanted to, if I wanted to take a huge chunk out of AEW. I'm doing everything I can to get this guy to come back home. I, I, I think that I think that's like if you're WWE, that's the move. And I think that there's money in a big Cody versus Brian Danielson match down the road. Maybe not WrestleMania, but like one one of their big four shows, stadium shows, I think could be headlined by uh by Brian and and Cody Rhodes. I think there's money there. Could be. Yeah, I think that's why you're Tony, you have to keep you have to keep them there. Um it's gonna be when he is no longer a week to week performer in that company. It's uh, it's gonna be bad. You no, know, they haven't yeah. they haven't found a guy to replace him. Yeah, no, no, they they haven't, and and you know either company's probably gonna give him like an Undertaker kind of schedule. So uh, sure. I'm sure sure he'll accept that. But with AEW, at least like if he wants to just go do like a random Tokyo Dome or like a random Arena Mexico, he could do that. But if WWE really wants him. They'll probably let him do that too. Like it's a it's a it's a new world out there. TKO's in charge now, so maybe they would just let him do that stuff. I I I, I don't know. I I oh shit, my ring. I think that I think that is super interesting. I I just don't know how it's going to play out. But my prediction is he stays. Well, I don't think he he gets to do Arena Mexico or the Tokyo Dome if he's back in WWE, because those companies are working with AEW. Yeah. But yeah. Um. I don't think I don't think he's going anywhere, but that's definitely not a guarantee. Um. All right, a couple more notes. Um. I AEW and WWE, WBD, sorry, exclusive TV rights negotiating window lasts into the summer, and then at that point, um, it looks like they'll be able to to start negotiating elsewhere. Um. It looks like the NBA is heading over to NBC, so now there's going to be a void there. Um, there's people that think that because the NBA is heading to NBC that that automatically makes AEW more viable. And, um, and then there's also the people that are like, look, if they lose NBA, they might just rebrand the whole damn thing and just put lower cost programming all over the place and just do more like, you know, reality shows and home and garden shows and just play, you know, reruns of the accountant. So, uh, some people think that that's not even connected to AEW at all, man. But, um, this whole TV thing is, uh, getting interesting and we're getting down to the wire here. Well, it's, I mean, here's the problem is like they're redo, they're redoing their contract, restructuring their contracts at a time when uh, the big deals might not be being tossed out anymore. Like we're seeing, we talked about it last week, we're seeing contraction with the streaming services. We're seeing a lot of streamers like bundle together to stay viable. So, but they all need content, right? So you're going to get paid something. Are you going to get paid that billion dollar deal you were hoping? I don't know. Um, Zasloff is always a wild card. You never know what he's going to do. The thing, like you said, though, is like, they already have those networks, right? Like that's what all their TLC networks are. Like you bought TBS and TNT and those things. So you can have prestige stuff. So the idea is how do you keep without, without killing your investment, right? How do you keep these things more prestige than what you already have? I don't know the answer to that. I don't think they know the answer to that, but that's, I don't foresee them becoming another TLC because they already have TLC. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't foresee it either. And, uh, you know, and I guess I've, I've been pretty optimistic on AEW's TV deal for a long time. I think they're going to get a new one. 
it might not be as big as they were anticipating. And I think that's something that they're going to need to prepare for. But guess what? They're carrying a lot of empty debt right now, like mm -hmm. ring of honor contracts. <laughs> and, and like they have a roster that's just way damn too big or way too damn big. They could probably cut 40% of their roster and use a lot of day rate guys and girls and, and, uh, and move like what they did with collision, moving it to a fixed location for collision. And while still getting a rights fee, I think they would be you know, financially viable at that point. But right now, everything that they're doing is geared towards getting that next big rights fee. And the increase just might not be exactly what they were hoping for. And if that's the case, then they just have to start cutting costs. Which is fine. That's best business. Yeah. Um, this is the timing might just not work out, but we don't know. We don't know. Like I said, with, with David Zaslav, you just don't know what he's going to do. He's not a very good CEO. No, uh, WBD is losing its ass, and uh, and it's has has not been good for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, couple That's notes, uh, Mercedes. I I don't know why I put this in here. Mercedes finally a heel. Thank God, right? Yeah, I mean, better. come on, dude. That was actually a good angle. Like, yeah. I'm way more interested in in Mercedes and Willow after that angle than I was beforehand. Like, Willow Doctor bombed her through a table and it looked freaking awesome. My first thought was, well, I guess Mercedes' ankle's okay. And good to go. Like yeah. it was, a, it was actually a good way to further that angle. Like Willow's a loved baby face, and like I don't know if they thought Mercedes was was going to be a, a baby face, and they or they accepted it, or they just thought this is going to work itself out. I think they thought it was going to work itself out because they already went through this with uh, Soraya, and I think they just said well, we can't push Mercedes as a heel right away. People are going to dig her. We'll just let it. We'll just let it work out. And it's it has like she's a better heel. You know, the AEW audience does not like her. Let's be honest. Like, no one's chanting CEO. No one's, like, feeling it. Like, her WWE shtick is not working here. And in my opinion, that should just be her her shtick permanently, is that's going to be her character. Use it to get heat. Yeah, and I, I think I think she could probably be a pretty damn good heel in this company. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's exactly what they signed her on to be because, you know, she – super famous all that and she did come out to the big ovation so they probably knew that and um but you know in hindsight hindsight being what it is you know they booked her against willow who is like the best baby face on the roster mm -hmm. so maybe they kind of knew that this was all coming right because you know sasha banks i always felt was way more effective as a heel in wwe and then coming over here she just came in as like a super famous person people are excited to see her but she naturally just kind of comes off as a heel um, and with her robotic voice and or the the way she just kind of panders to the audience and she calls herself the CEO. I mean, that's all total heel, heel character. So I, I think it's working. Although, you know, for, for Willow, um, she just has to be careful because if you're going to go out there, you know, dress like Hillary Clinton, you, you might become a heel yourself. So you got to be careful with that, with the pantsuits, you know, be more of a badass. Uh, but the doctor bomb I thought was awesome. I thought that looked great. Uh, that it table did. just exploded. I think she and she just laid into that thing, man. She did. It was pretty. It was like I said. It was really good. Um, I do think that I think Mercedes is also aware that she's a better heel than a baby face, right? So I had yeah. to think they they knew this was coming because they didn't do anything to endear her to us, really, right? They programmed her with like I said, the biggest baby face in the roster right away. Like they had to see this coming. So it's working. Like it's working for me. It's probably going to main event the show. Curious to see what happens. Hopefully, Mercedes is a good wrestler, right? Willow's a good wrestler. They should have a really good match as long as no one yeah. that. Yeah, I, 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 I think they will. Um, but man, I think that was it. I think I ran through all my. I think I ran through all my thing. Let's get to the chat um, before we head out. Let's get to the chat uh, real quick. Um, let's see. So Antonio Baker says Jim Cornette did that with Ring of Honor and OVW, just set it up to make it look bigger. That's what he did at TNA. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like a, that's like an old school thing to do. We're talking about trick. setting up yeah. the what's that? The territory trick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian Color says uh, Byron Color. Sorry, says that's a Royal Rumble pay per view match if I ever heard one. Cody Rose versus Daniel Bryan. Royal Rumble. You know they can do one overseas in one of their big shows overseas. I don't obviously rock versus uh, Cody is happening at WrestleMania next year. So um, I, but yeah, I think Brian Danielson versus Cody has got money written all over it. If they ever go that way, which I don't, I don't think they will. Uh, AEW being able to offer people office jobs, which include health benefits and stuff as a private company is an underrated thing. Agreed. Um, yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're not doing it with that many people, <laughs> but no. 
Yeah, if they would do it to their entire roster, I think that would be awesome because I think that those those wrestlers are employees. They're absolutely employees. I think the independent contractor stuff is crap, and um, and AEW has been willing to do that for some people as long as they're famous enough, but they're not doing it for other people. Like yeah. when they get it, you know what I mean? So that's not I, true. I, that's not well, true. If, they, if 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 the talent has leverage, right? I mean, that's how they brought in the EVPs. Right, well, they, they brought him in, and now they got the health benefits. But they're not doing it for like JD Drake. You know what I mean? Sean Dean. Sean Dean works in the office. Yes. Like there are guys there who have legitimate jobs with the company, right? Also, who get insurance benefits. Like that's what you're talking. Like there are there are lots of lower level guys who actually work for AEW. Well, yeah. If Energy. if they have a, if they also have a producer gig or you know like. What's that? Yeah. What's that guy that we hate? Pat Buck, right? Who wrestles like he's well, also he is, a producer. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, Captain Sean Dean. I think, I think they he started there as a wrestler, and they realized that he probably had some you know other skills. I think well, he was Army, right? He was Army. Army. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and and he was an officer in the Army. At least I think his name's Captain Sean Dean. Mm-hmm. Would think. So they probably like, hey, you got some other skills. We'll we'll put you we'll put you to work doing other stuff. But I'm saying like, if they did that for the entire roster, then that would that would be groundbreaking. They, they yeah, I agree. No, no, they should. Now everyone, dude, everyone. The end. If you work for this, okay. Tonight, I was a, I was a freelance camera operator tonight. I'm an independent contractor. I showed up, I did my job, went home. I can work wherever the fuck I want. I'm yeah. A teacher. Like that is not what they can do with either with any of the companies. Like AEW allows you to do work some indies, but you work for AEW. Yeah. So there, by there, you are an employee. Right. It's not being like a contracted plumber where like if I contract a plumber, but I hate my neighbor, I say, you can come here, but you also can't work on my neighbor's house. That stuff's not going to fly. You know what I mean? Like we're not going to be able to put that in a contract and that's kind of what they're doing. Um, and it's, yep. it is been going on for a long time. So it's not AEW specific, but uh, since, since you guys brought it up, <laughs> uh, I wanted to go on a little bit of a rant about how they're actually employees and not true independent contractors. Um Agreed. Byron Color, there's a guy in AEW I do see going to WWE, and that's Ricky Starks. I could see that. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, I, I, th- in fact, I think he like um for all the big shows. I think he's actually there at the WWE shows carrying Cody's bags a lot of times. So I think it's like a natural fit for him to go there. I, I think I like Ricky Starks a lot. I think he's very talented. I think it's funny that everybody's like, well, that guy should go to WWE and then he'd be a star. It's like, well, you know, whose spots is he gonna take? Yeah. But uh, hey, guys, I really appreciate everybody being here tonight. Sorry we started a little bit late. Sorry we had some technical difficulties early. Uh, Sorry that I went on. I'm actually not sorry I went on a big rant to start the show. I think that's pretty funny. But um, we really do appreciate you guys being here. Please give us a big thumbs up. Hit that like button. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, please give us a five-star review and let Joe and Rich know that you came here to listen to Mike and JD show. Um, head over to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. So guys, if you, if, uh, if you're listening to this on Apple podcasts or Spotify or Google podcasts or whatever, um, but you don't want to hear all the ads, you can become a Patreon subscriber, five bucks a month. I actually, a lot of times this show doesn't get uploaded until sometime on Friday, but, um, I tip, uh, for, the voices of wrestling network feed, but I put it to Patreon right away. So it comes right in your feed on Thursday night. You'll have it in your, if you just like to get up and listen to it on your way to work, you'll, you'll have it right there on your Patreon feed. And I think that's how a lot of people listen to us too. So uh, head over there. Uh, I have a brace for impact coming out this weekend. I also have a already in the can, a MLW review. And then JD, we're going to do some X-Men talk this weekend, right? We got our buddy. We got our buddy, Jeremy Feinstone coming in on Sunday night. We're going to talk X-Men 97. I haven't watched the final yet. I'm going to watch it tomorrow night. I'm very excited. Best show on TV. Yeah. And uh, Patreon uh, Patreon subscribers, if you're listening right now, I threw a Q&A thread out there. So please comment on that thread on stuff that you want JD and I to talk about. And the stuff that's not TNA related will end up on overtime. But the stuff that's TNA related, I'm going to just do on Brace for Impact. I like to keep my TNA talk on uh, Brace for Impact. Unless it's like a historical thing and JD wants to get in on it. But um for, but I like to keep the TNA stuff uh, strictly to the TNA show. So uh, please go ahead and comment on there. Let us know what you want us to talk about. And then I'm going to actually clip those segments, those Q&A segments, for free on Patreon. So that way all the free subscribers can uh, can uh, check it out too. As I make an effort to put more free content on the Patreon. So that's coming up. Lots of, com- lots of stuff coming out this weekend. Uh, all right, guys. That's going to do it for us this week. And until next week. Mahalo. Uh, 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 uh.
competition starting to get thick. It's a click, so I hope you watch your A game. A man, no way. From the track when we unite and spit, this isn't A game. Better bring your A game. Competition starting to get thick. It's a click, so I hope you watch your A game. A man, no way. From the track.